Good morning and welcome to Linwood Community Church's video outreach, Putting the Pieces Together. I'm Lefty Olguin, your host. I encourage you to visit our website, linwoodcc.org, and listen to Pastor Dave's sermons, as well as our Bible studies by Les Pay, and of course, our awesome praise team. I encourage you to visit us after you attend your own church. I uh, as I started to put this uh, message together and go over my final draft, um, as you will see a little farther down, um, I was given a message uh, call. Let me know that uh, one of my good friends and uh, an outstanding young woman uh, in the community, Kristen Baldonado, uh, passed from COVID. Um, <clears throat> So I'm going to go ahead, and I never dedicate these things to anybody but the Lord, but I'm sure um, she'll be able to share that with him where she's at right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, you know, this week is all about joy, not only because Santa delivered his toys to all the boys and girls, but because we celebrate the birth uh, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad. Stretan Bovich and Bon Natale, and blessings to you all. Being raised in San Pedro, a lot of Croatian friends still do, a lot of Italian friends still do, and of course a lot of uh, Hispanic friends still do, and a lot of every nationality since San Pedro is a diverse culture. Um, I was blessed uh, to have a great family, and every Christmas. Uh, we would gather at one of our relatives' homes, and and all the cousins and aunts and uncles. We'd celebrate this huge, huge family, and um, that was a great time for me. I rem I can remember going to uh, my uncle Charlie and Aunt Stella's house one time, and 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 uh, my uncles are on the player piano, those ones you pump, and they're sitting there singing Christmas songs, and everything was was great. I mean, life was was great on New on Christmas Eve for my family and myself. And uh, and it was a big thing for my brothers and I. Christmas Eve was uh, as exciting, if not more exciting, than Christmas Christmas Day. Um, we'd get home late from our family get together and throw our put our cookies and milk on the on the table for Santa Claus and even though I didn't believe in Santa Claus at that time, I think I was eight, nine, ten, and my brother still did. And uh, we jump into bed waiting uh, for the sun to come up, or almost come up. And jumping out of bed and running into the living room was just as exciting as the first pitch of a baseball game or the whistle on the opening kickoff of a football game. And uh, we would. Uh, have our adrenaline flowing, man. We're ready to get up and jump at those presents. It was like a shark that smells blood in the water. We'd fly into the living room, start ripping a pro, uh, presents, and, and just uh, enjoy that time that we had. You know, I remember one Christmas when I was 10, I got a Daisy BB gun, and uh, my first real gun. Up to that point, you know, I had water guns, uh, Nerf ball guns, ping pong ball guns. But this was a, my first real gun. And uh, with this present, my mother told me, came great responsibility. And she had some more rules that I had to, to abide by in order to keep my gun. I remember uh, the first rule is never point a gun at anyone. Always make sure the gun is unloaded when you put it away. Rem remember, it's not a toy for little kids. We'll make sure to keep it locked away. All, all great rules to live by. Well, she didn't say that I couldn't shoot the Christmas bulbs off the tree. 
And uh, needless to say, my BB gun and I were grounded until I got a driver's license. And uh, I did tell her, uh, hey, Mom, at least I didn't shoot the angel off the top of the tree. And um, she really didn't appreciate that. But uh, so my, my life and my BB gun, we, we, were, we were put away for a while. But Christmas was a special time for us because we not only celebrated uh, a Santa Claus Christmas, we also celebrated the greatest gift of all. And that was the birth, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. And you can read about it in Luke 2, 5 through 14. Uh, we find Joseph and Mary at an inn in Bethlehem. Jesus is born. Uh, we find him wrapped in, a, in a swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. Shepherds saw the brightest star. And hosts of angels sang and praised the Lord. A Bethlehem star. We saw one of the a unique, uh, universal thing last night when we saw the, the stars line up or the two planets line up, and I hadn't done that for many years. Um, in Matthew 2, 1 through 11, we see that the wise men traveling to see Jesus, bringing him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You know, it was then that the wise men realized he'd actually, uh, that he was actually the greatest gift in the world at Christmas. Certainly there are two Christmas celebrations, one to make sure kids get to open presents, and that's an earthly celebration, and a good one. And while that will certainly make kids smile, that is second to the other Christmas celebration, where we celebrate the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That gift of salvation is offered to everyone, free, and lasts throughout eternity. The most important smile on your kid's face is the one that you should share together in heaven. My perfect celebration of Christmas is to be with my family, to reflect on Jesus, to know that God loves us, and that we should all share the gift to all. Right now, I have a close friend suffering in the ICU from COVID. While her earthly life is hanging in the balance, I can assure you that her future in heaven is bright. Not because she's an awesome person, but because she's accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. How do I know? We discussed it many times while sitting in the left field bleachers at San Pedro High Baseball Games. I know I'll see her again. You? As I'm finishing this sentence, I get a call that uh, she passed and went home to be with your Savior. Well, my heart's broken. My spirit smiles. She was an amazing mother, aunt, sister, sister-in-law, friend, and left field bleacher bum. And we will always miss her. For all her friends and family, the only way to see her smile again will be if you're with her standing next to Jesus in heaven. And the only way for that to happen is if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Romans 3.23 tells us, we're all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Open your, open your door to your heart and let him in. In Revelation 3.20 says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him that dying with him and he with me. Jesus said, John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Here's your opportunity to receive the gift of eternal life. Don't wait. We never know when our earthly life will come to an end. Where you spend eternity is totally up to you. I, um, I had the privilege of Nailed to share Christ with, with Kristen. Um, first thing we talked about when we sat down in the left field bleachers, and we had a bunch of people in left field, and first thing we talked about uh, was her kids. That's number one. Talked about Sam and how proud she was of Sam as a musician, but more than that, as a wonderful young man. Uh, we talked about Ben, who played on the team. And um, 
again, it wasn't just that he was a baseball player. It was that he was a great young man. And she did a fine, fine job raising her two, two sons. And we talk about that because that was a joy to her, her kids. Uh, we talk about all the other kids, too. She'd always bring up uh, him growing up and playing on different teams and teams that uh, he played for Rich Deanna, who was a, a great, a great youth coach. And my kid was playing. I would, I would want my kid to play with him. He was a great example. He loved those kids. He and his wife Laura loved those kids, and as well as many people, all the fans, all the people who were there. She was a bright, shining star. Never said a bad word about anybody. She was always the kindest, sweetest, caring person. And uh, sometimes we don't know why uh, God takes us home, but that's really not up to us to question. Our, our thing is make sure that we have him in our life. Make sure that we're walking in his will. Make sure that we, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and things will work out. Uh, well, I know there are thousands of hearts broken right now. Uh, so I want you to know that your spirit should be smiling because she was a born-again Christian and she is where she's supposed to be right now. So as we close, I just, you know, I want to go to prayer and um, certainly pray for the things that are going on today in this world. And um, you always hear, you always hear the statement at every funeral that she's in a better place. Well, I'll tell you something right now. There's, there's a lot of better places than with this world right now. But she is in the better place. She's in the best place. And it's not a cliche, it's a fact. And one of these days I'm going to be standing up there and I'm probably going to go up there and the first thing I'm going to say is, I had Ben do today and we start talking baseball and get back into it. But uh, she's going to be missed. Um, and I just want to uh, go to prayer right now and ask the Lord to be with the family. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for... Uh, uh, the real meaning of Christmas. Thank you that we still have the opportunity to share the real meaning of Christmas and uh, family and with friends and, and, and with strangers. And it's not just this time of the year that we should focus on this. It's every day of the year, 365 days. And Lord, we ask you to give us those opportunities to speak to people, to be bold, to step out on faith, and... Uh, Lord, we ask, we ask for uh, healing for this family, friends, people that know her. Um, there's a hole. She's going to leave a hole. and For some, it might never be filled until we see her uh, in heaven. But, uh, Lord, we will see her there. And I pray for those who do not know you um, that want to see her again, Lord, just... Bring their hearts up and uh, bring them closer to you. Pray for the the COVID. We pray for this flu, this new strain uh, that attacks the lungs, Lord. And we, we know that it's the flu. We've had worse flus, but not at this day, not in this age when everything else is going crazy. And, and so we ask for peace, calm things down. Uh, Put your healing hand on those, Lord. And Lord, we just really ask you to, to uh, evangelize, evangelize, just spread the word, the gospel. Thank you for my brother from another mother, Pete, and uh, his global prayer chain, Lord. And just thank you for those, all of those who are out sharing the word right now. Not only in times like these, but in every, every time, Lord. So, uh, until I see you or until we meet, Lord, just keep us going. Keep us going strong all the way to the end, to the finish. Paul says you're going to finish the race. And it's a race. It's a race, Lord. So uh, be with us. Thank you for my church body. Thank you for the, my pastor. I just thank you, Lord, that we, we can share the word right now in times like these. And when church opens back up, that we can share them that way too in church fellowship. So. Thank you for everything you've given us, Lord, and this wonderful day.
Ask in your name. The beating of my heart is deafening, but I'm still listening in the silence after the storm. Your voice will bring me home. I can hear more than ever, taking me to a place that's better. Pieces together, together.